Hey everybody, welcome back. So today I am so excited to share with you guys how I met my husband, Shuler King. I know a lot of you have been waiting with bated breath for me to <laughs> come on here and um, share with you guys how we met. Um, Cause I, I know it might seem like I kind of popped up out of nowhere. I know a lot of people are, are in the comments are saying, you know, oh, I didn't know he was married. Um, you know, when did he get married and all of that. So I just kind of want to set things up for you guys and um, share the story about how we met. And he might pop in for a second um, on this video. But um, and I one thing I want to clear up though first is that um, he was so gracious to share my YouTube channel. I did not know that he was going to do that. Um, and if you've gone had the opportunity to go back and look um, at my previous videos, the very first video I ever put up was eight years ago. And uh, the only reason I started a YouTube channel was because for my master's degree program, um, and it was an online program, I had to do an interpersonal communications uh, course that I was taking. I had to do a final project. And the professor said we had to upload our videos to YouTube. So um, if you haven't had a chance to kind of go back through my channel to see the content that I've been putting up, I know a lot of you uh, might think that my channel is new, but it's new to you, which I'm so, so excited and glad that you are here. Um, but I've been posting videos for, I guess, the last eight years, since eight years ago was the first uh, video I ever put up. So with all that being said, um, I just want to say that even though Shuler's going to pop on for just a second, I don't want to get in, I don't want anyone to get used to him coming on and being a part of my channel um, because he is so, so busy with putting out content of his own and making sure that he's keeping you guys laughing and I applaud him. He's such a hard worker, you guys. Like, I don't know, I really don't know that I've met somebody else who's as hard a worker as he is um, to make sure that he's putting up content and putting smiles on people's faces and just fulfilling his purpose, walking in his purpose. So, um, yeah, all that being said, he's not going to pop in on my channel very often, but I did ask him today to just pop on and um, give his side of the story too, but I'll start with my side. So, um, let's see, where do I want to begin? I'll start back in, I guess, twenty, the year 2015, 2016 was very, very hard for me. Um, I was, uh, God was really waking me up to seeing a lot of the people in my life who were no longer serving their purpose, if that makes sense. Um, it was a couple friendships that I had to let go. I, it was a couple relationships that I had to let go. And in the process of all of that, my spirit began to be drained um, because I didn't really understand what was going on until later on. Um, but I, by the end of 2016, I think it was the end of 2016, I was in such, um, no, you know what, I'll say mid 2016 I was in a really deep dark place and I was just very very um, spiritually drained I was spiritually drained emotionally drained physically drained and I just was like God you have got to do something I have to do something different like I need a mentor I need a coach I need counseling I need all of this stuff so um, I did sign up for counseling and I signed up for a coaching program and um, I started my healing process and um, and I was doing a lot a lot a lot of spiritual work just trying to build my spirit back up um, because I've always been serious about my faith and um, so to be in a place where I was so drained it was it took a toll on me but 
uh, fast forward, I went through counseling. Um, I went through an amazing Bible study that I really needed at the time. Um, I had cut off a lot of people, everybody who I needed to cut off. Um, I left those people uh, where they needed to be left. And I just began to pray and ask God for some things, for a change in my life. And so, um, and one of the reasons why I appreciate coaching so much, again, I went through the co my uh, initial coaching program in 2014, but I didn't really get any continued uh, coaching. So I signed up for a coaching program and it completely changed my life. It was so transformative. And so that's how I knew that I really, really wanted to get back into coaching. Um, but during my coaching program, um, our coach challenged us to get a prayer box. So this is my little prayer box, and I have another one. Um, but we and and she just tasked us to write down our prayers and write down everything. And I'll do a, a following video about all of that kind of stuff but just to give you an idea of what what all was in my prayer box and in my uh, I call it a, my prayer slash manifestation box um, I got fake money in there I got these uh, fake checks that I wrote written out um, about money that I'm trying to wheel into my life and this I wish I would have written some uh, better dates on those types of things so that I could really see um, you know the timeline of the things that God's doing in my life um, but either way some of those so those are some of the things that are in my box and one of the things that I wrote in my box was I will meet my husband by the end of 2017 and begin building a solid genuine friendship with him and so that's kind of where it began because like I said, I have been praying and praying and praying. I'm like, Lord, I know there's a man out here who's genuine, who genuinely cares for me. That's not just going to want to see what he can get from me and all that kind of stuff. That I know, God, that there's somebody out there for me who is genuine, who can reciprocate the love that I have to give, who can, uh, who I can trust, and somebody who's loyal. Like I knew all those things that I wanted in a man. And so I just started believing, really truly believing that that man was out there for me. And so yeah, so I wrote that on the card. And lo and behold, it was about, I think January, it was either January 1st or January 2nd. Between, you know, between January 1st and January 3rd of 2018, I met Schuler, and how it happened was my great grandmother had passed away and um, my mother and my aunt were at Schuler's family funeral home making the arrangements for my great grandmother and my parents had actually both of my parents had actually met Schuler probably a couple years prior to um, to this funeral because they like I said they've done funerals for my family for years um, because come to find out my 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 grandfather my maternal grandfather actually used to tutor Schuler um, because he was a math educator um, so Schuler probably knew my great uh, my maternal grandfather better than I did because um, I was a military brat we moved around a lot um, but he grew up right there in Sumter and that's where my family's from my both of my parents are from Sumter um, so my grandfather actually used to work part-time at the Williams family funeral home so our the family ties that we have go really really deep like it's um, our families have known each other for decades but he and I had never just formally met each other I'm sure 
in the past in passing we had met um again because he'd done funerals i'm sure he's directed funerals for my family before but we had never formally met but this particular time um that my great grandmother passed away my aunt was doing most of the arrangements so kind of long story short um not really it's kind of a long story and i like to tell it but um the day of the funeral was when he and i first really saw each other and um engaged with each other i guess um yeah because by that time my mom had told me what she had done <laughs> and um I was kind of excited because, and I guess really my mom was tired of be getting my heart broken and <laughs> all this kind of stuff. So she was just like, let me help my daughter find somebody. Um, and I'm so appreciative. I tell her all the time, mommy, you did a good job. Um, but so kind of fast forward, um, it was the day of the funeral when we first met and we didn't even have a chance at that that day to really talk and get to know each other it wasn't until the day after the funeral um, because by that time I think he had sent me a message and you know we were saying we needed to meet up at some point and so it was the day after the funeral he actually had to come get some chairs from my grandmother's house and when he got there my mom just kind of invited him in to come sit down have a cup of coffee just you know sit down and talk so the day after the funeral we literally sat at my grandmother's kitchen table and we talked and talked and talked like we had known each other for years like it was just we just kind of clicked and um it was really it was really interesting it's just like we we knew each other and the interesting thing about that is one of the prayers that I had prayed when I had really gotten serious about building my spirit back up and really willing the people who were supposed to be in my life to my life when I was really pulling them in one of the things that I prayed about my husband was God, will you help us recognize each other? And that's how I know he was an answered prayer. Because when I tell you, when we sat at my grandmother's kitchen table, we literally we just talked for about an hour. And that was our first time ever meeting. So we really, we recognized each other. And when I have him come on, I'll have him share, you know, kind of his side of the story. But um that's basically it like my mom introduced me to Schuler, and i'm so so grateful that she did i'm so grateful that god set it up that way and um kind of the rest is history but anyway that's that i'll leave it at that and i'm gonna go get Schuler, and i will be right back stay tuned Okay, so you ready? I found him. <laughs> Here he is. I found him. <sighs> and of course he was somewhere working. Yes. Um, somewhere in the house working. Because he's he works. <laughs> yes. He works all the time. I do. But um so I've kind of already done the roundabout way. I've already talked their heads off uh -huh. about kind of just setting things up how we met, but ultimately that my mother introduced us. Right. Right. Um so if you want to share your side a little bit, and I don't want to, I don't you want don't to want take up too much to, more to of your time. Long. Right. Okay. But. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go into the back back story about your grandfather and all that stuff. So we don't have to do that. No, not really. I kind of said a little okay. something about all right, it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, my story, uh, my side of the journey starts with us. Um, not us, but me. I was at the funeral home, and I was in the back sweeping, um, and and. A lot of times when I'm like working outside and sweeping and stuff, I like pray, like talk to God, talk to myself. And you know what I mean? It's kind of like meditation for me. So what I said, you know, I just told God, I said, you know, I think I'm ready 
to meet my wife, you know, send me my wife. I asked God to send me my wife. And um, and that's what he did. Like, I know you told a story about your great-great-grandmother who passed away. And all uh -huh. that stuff. Yep. So, you know, uh, so that happened, like, maybe like a week later, like a week after me saying that. I'm thinking it seemed like a week. I don't know. <laughs> so, and um, when um, I came to the house, to get you to pick you all up mm -hmm. and you walked in the room a voice just as clear as they said that's her so that's what happened that, that's how you know that's how you and I, I think you you told a story about that day the funeral how we really didn't get a chance to talk to each other yeah I talked yeah, about it just a little yeah, bit though. yeah that's yeah. that's that was kind of you know a little frustrating but you know we worked it out and um yeah. Because I think I think he thought that he was gonna be able to like talk to me after the yeah. day, after we left like the burial ground and all that, but yeah. your dad told no, me. No, he he that. sent me, you know, somewhere else. <laughs> so I was like, All right, so I sent you a message. Mm -hmm. I sent you a message on Facebook. You know, plus your mama had given me your car, your yeah. business car. Yeah, she she gave me all the points of contact. <laughs> you know what I mean? And usually I don't really kinda go for that, but it was like it was different because you know, our family know each other. And even though I had never met you, I had never, I'd known your uncle, mm -hmm. met your parents. Mm -hmm. uh, I had met your brother one time, and I knew your grandfather well. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, I didn't know she was in the world. And, you know, when your, your mom was like, you met my daughter? And I was like, you got a daughter? Like, where the hell did y'all get a daughter from? <laughs> and, you know, but it, I think there's, there's, there's a reason behind that. There's a purpose why we never, why we had never met. Yeah, and I, I talked about that too, just how, you know, everything kind of just leads back to God's timing. Everything's about God's timing because it's just interesting that our families have known each other for decades mm -hmm. and the fact that we just, we never met. Like, yeah. we, we never met. Right. So, um, it was just the time was right. And I talked about how I wrote this, my little note card in my prayer, uh, my prayer box mm -hmm. about, you know, I'll meet my husband at the end of 2017. And it was. It was. What? Nah, it was eighteen. It was yeah, 18. it was eighteen. Yeah. But that's that's the end of two thousand seventeen. Yeah, so nah, going it was. Into it was already. Year. It was January the second. The second. The second. Yeah, January the second. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I have to be honest. We let's. I was talking to three other girls at the time. <laughs> now that's you know, and I'm just I'm saying that mm -hmm. because, um, you know, because sometimes people get in their mind like it's you know, all like the Disney World oh, story. Oh, yeah, no. And I just wanted, you know, it's like, I had it, I didn't just go on nobody. I had to pick up the phone and call because we met and then I had got a phone call from Capone mm -hmm. to go to Cleveland to open up for him. And, um, wait a minute, that was 2017? Or was it 18? It was 18. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, because it's 20 now. But, yeah, so I went to Cleveland and... We FaceTimed the whole time the I was entire in time. Yeah, and it was like the other, I was getting other text messages and not responding and stuff like that. And then when I got back home, I was like, look, <laughs> uh, I had to make phone calls because I didn't want to start a relationship with you. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. With, with all the other stuff. And you told him about the first date? I didn't, but I have to say too, like I actually had a date the day that I got back home. to uh -huh. show. I don't know if I ever told you that. But the day that I got back from uh -huh. uh, my gra uh, my great grandmother's funeral, the uh -huh. day that I got back home to Charlotte, I actually had a date that night, mm -hmm. and I was so like uncomfortable uh -huh. because it's like I already knew that yeah. that wasn't gonna work out. Hey, you know. And so yeah, later right. on I ended up sending the guy a message just like, hey, can we just be friends, please? Yeah. You yeah, know, I so mean, we, we both started out on a clean slate. Like, yeah, we didn't, well, I, I didn't, was, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want, you know, all of that. Um, but you know what? At that particular time, too, even though I was talking to three other people, mm -hmm. um, like, I wasn't, I was in the mindset of trying to find, you know, right. a wife. So, right. you know, there was nothing, you know, um, it was a real process of me trying to get to know them. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't yeah. like I was just out frolicking. Right. I was really just, you know what I mean, trying to get to know, you know. And yeah. then, um, what else? 
Nah, see, you talk about the first the first date. You didn't talk about that, did you? No, I didn't talk about that the yet. First, well, the first date, all we did was look at each other. Yeah, we did. You got y'all. It was eat. so it was so funny. He really didn't eat, and it was it was um, uh, interesting because it was you just got back from Cleveland. Yeah, you were supposed to fly somewhere else, right? I was supposed, but to, you my were final destination Charlotte. was Florence. Okay, so I his, okay. Florence, South Carolina, but I. Because I, I caught hell trying to get to Cleveland. Yeah. I was supposed to leave from Florence, mm -hmm. connect in Charlotte, and then fly to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And then the, they shut the Florence airport down. Oh, because So we drove to Charlotte, and then I caught that flight. I caught a, I actually caught a connecting flight to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I came back, we went on a date. and. Uh, yeah, I actually picked him up from the airport. And she had <laughs> gifts. And I had gifts you for him. You still remember what you got me? I got you thermal. I got you okay. A I got thermal a thermal shirt. and a neck uh, travel pillow. Yeah, I still right? got the pillow and yeah. the thermal. Yeah. And um, but the second date is the one that I always talk about. I know, but I want to talk about our first. Somebody asked about the first date, so I'll say this: our first, our very first date, it was really like a spiritual experience. There's no other way to describe it. We literally sat in that restaurant and looked at each other and our first date was in California Dreaming in Columbia, South Carolina. Boom. And yeah. like we literally just kind of held hands and stared at each other kind of as if to say where, where have, have you, you been? been? Like you almost got cussed up. Like, <laughs> why is you hiding? You know? Yeah. So but, it was it was it was really really nice. We sat in the restaurant and we just was it was just really it was almost like it was just the two of us in in the restaurant. Yeah. We were just there, like every so then, present. Yeah, every now and then we get interrupted by you know somebody. The waitress. Yeah, but shout out to her because I I went to school. Yeah, with her. you did. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know what I mean. And I don't think she's even waitress anymore. She's doing something else. That's but awesome. the second date that I that is the one that I like to talk about because my car cut off <laughs> on the second date. I used to drive a 2005 <laughs> Chevy Impala, and it was faded on the hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was a, you know it was a it was a car that was running on fate. To be honest <laughs> with you, uh, because not, everything was starting to break down on the car, and uh, you know, I it was it was the car that I that I grinded in. Like I had uh, about 300,000 miles on it. I drove to California in it, New York, mm -hmm. wherever you could think of. I started, uh, well, I didn't start my career driving that car, but you know what I mean? That car was there for most of my uh, comedy career. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, so that's how I got all the miles and that's how I got beat up <laughs> and, you know, faded paint and all that stuff. And we were on a second date with my car and uh, I was actually driving. We were on the road mm -hmm. and the car just, whew, I was like, oh, shit. We were at a light. Yeah, we were at yeah. a, a traffic light, and he was all—he was taking me back to my granny's house yep. after our second date. Yep. And at the light, the car just, just died. Just died right there, <laughs> and it and it and it semi died. <laughs> it was in comatose at the gas station. I don't know remember that. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, it was like, nah, what happened? I was trying to hide that from you. <laughs> I really was, and I I cranked the, you know what I'm saying? I cranked the cranked the car and it wouldn't do it and then I turned it off real fast and I'm like, nah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait a second. And then I and then it I turned it again and it cranked up. So I was like, okay, you acting right. Cause we got company. Okay. <laughs> and then we got to the light and it just it just died. So, you know, but you were real cool about it and you didn't judge me like cause you knew the car was right when I we when I first came to get you the car was you you looked at it. And you was like, huh, okay. No, I did not. I mean, you know how people, you know what I mean, but see, you're a different kind of person. And I've been on dates, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, even when I've had to meet somebody somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I've been on dates, and, and, like, even when, you know, you meet somebody, and then you finish eating, and then you're going back, walking back to your car, and she's walking back to hers, and mm -hmm. she's trying to peep and see what you're driving. <laughs> like, I walk you to your car, and, I and like, when you got a raggedy car in your mind, you be like, why don't she just pull the hell off? <laughs> go home. I walked you to your damn car. Go home. But she's waiting to see what you're driving. And, you know, that's happened maybe two or three times where you walk somebody in the car and then they wait around to see what you're driving. And then once they see it, they kind of don't call back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, you know, it, it, it's, 
that's just life, you know what I mean? Certain things are just, you know, to be And that's expected. how you weed the wrong ones out. Yeah. That's yeah, that. Yeah, On that. Yeah. yeah, but you called back. You hung I in did. there with me. I did, did For a I? little while. Yeah, you did. And I mean, I, I ended up having to get a new car, like, what, in March? Yeah, a few months later. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we were dating in January, and then, like, when we started dating in January and in March, mm-hmm. you know, I had to get a, I had to get a new one, because mm-hmm. um, mine, it, it died. <laughs> like, it literally, like, my it car did. died. It died, like, I always say that my car died, like, how Blue did in The Temptations. You know how he went around the corner to get the spare ribs? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. He went around the corner to get the spare ribs. And, you know, it, but what happened, I was at the funeral home. I had to run. We had a a, a, we had a, a, a visitation that night. Mm-hmm. So I was going to go home, mm-hmm. get something from the house, and come back. Mm-hmm. And I got to the house, got to my parents' house, mm-hmm. and that was it. Just never came back. Oh, blue. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Yep, that's oh, exactly gosh. what happened. Came, ran in the house, came. I mean, and I, I kept mm-hmm. trying to get it, mm-hmm. and it just would not give me anything. So, little tink tink. Yeah, that was. But it. and you know what's interesting too is I remember like so I I met you as Frank. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people don't know that. You know, I I didn't meet him at Shula King, and he only had on Facebook. He only this, had like fifty two thousand followers. Yeah, or something this was, like that. Yeah, all of this was before we met. Like right on the cusp. Like I didn't see any of it coming. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, but I had a a, a period. I can't say it was a growth period mm-hmm. because that was steadily. You know what I mean? But there was a a, a point that I had reached mm-hmm. right before we met, mm-hmm. and that was. Um, the other prayer that I was that I had said, I, like I said, I talked to God when I was outside, of it. Mm-hmm. and I said to God, you know, when I moved back home uh, for a little while because I had had a surgery, mm-hmm. and then um, I just said to God, I was like, you know what, it doesn't matter to me what you do. Like if if you want me to be the biggest name in comedy, fine. If you don't, fine. If you want me to stay virtually unknown, fine. As long as you're pleased with what I'm doing, I'm yeah. cool. And that's when everything just started, mm-hmm. you know, opening up. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. So yeah. all in all, it's, um, I think our story, our life story and life journey is about purpose and timing. And yeah. um, God's timing is everything. So whatever you might be believing God for, um, just stay encouraged. Keep working. And, um even with Schuler, like I know he he had been on the grind, the comedy grind for fifteen years before yeah. he kinda took off. So that's you know, a, a lot of times segment. yeah, that's a whole nother segment. Yeah. You you have you put in the work, you know what I mean? Like people see kinda see your success and they're like, dang, that it looks like it happened overnight, but it really didn't. And I can tell you all of these all my whole prayer box like it's stuff written in here that I wrote years ago and I'm just now seeing I'm just now seeing it being fulfilled so just stay encouraged I'm glad you guys are here I'm glad he joined me to I know because you all are you all were wondering how we met and where I came from um and even with him, I appreciate him sharing my page. I didn't know that he was going to do that the other day. And like I said in the beginning, um, please, please, please go back and watch some of my older videos because um, there's there's so much value in yeah. uh, a lot of those lessons, a lot of those messages that I shared. So even even though you all are just now coming to know about my page, it's been there, and it's I've been, been and I've and I've been working. So and I and I didn't want to bogart the your path yeah that's right that's my thing right it's like i don't want to and that's why you know you know i sometimes and i, I get it people go hand in hand with certain things mm-hmm. but it's like you know you have to respect somebody else's process sure and how they want to do it because you're already successful that's true you know what i mean yeah. i have enough trouble trying to read a damn book that you done <laughs> wrote one so you know that you yeah. know so i don't have to you know you have to let people have their own validity mm-hmm. that's why i didn't 
I don't yeah. know about that. And so, and I appreciate you even stopping by because then I let them know too that don't that don't expect you to show up all the time <laughs> because he's working to to make sure you guys keep laughing. Yeah, I got and bills to pay. Yeah, he has Nobody bills got to time pay. to play with y'all. So, I, and I'm just gonna keep coming with the with the inspiration and whatever else you guys might wanna wanna know. Um, mm-hmm. so, let us help me. Like that prayer box, I had never even met anybody with a prayer box. Mm-hmm. That was one of the reasons why I said, "Okay, yeah, she, she, she it." And you know what? It's interesting. I just remember when I opened my box to look for that card. There's letters in there that I wrote to you before I met you. So I, I have to give him those. I'll give him those a little bit later. Uh-huh. But, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so, I was about to say the wrong thing. Yeah, don't say the wrong thing. Not here. Not here. <laughs> but thank y'all so much for tuning in um, to <laughs> How I Met My Husband, Shula King. Now you all know the story. Um, and uh, there you have it. So until next time, keep evolving on your unique by design journey. Yes. And we'll see you later. Good night.